Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. I got emails and messages from you guys a lot asking how I became an artist, how I got to the point where I am now. So I thought today I would tell you guys that very long, very boring story. Now I'm going to talk about my health problems, not because it's a poor me, feel sorry for me. It's just that they are so central to how I ended up where I am now. I have celiac disease, which I did not know until maybe 10 years or so ago. I also have fibromyalgia and a form of arthritis that causes your spine and in my case my wrist, my right wrist of course, my, and I'm right-handed so that sucks sometimes, but it causes your joints to fuse together. I'm not certain at what point the fibromyalgia took over. I mean, it started off, I was always sick and it just continued to get worse. And this is not a poor me story by any means. The point is I was sick a lot as a kid. Because I was sick so often, I spent a lot of time indoors drawing or coloring. I love to draw and color. I love to make things in general. And I still got to play outdoors as a kid. I rode my bike terribly. My balance has always been off, so I tended to run into things and fall off the bike. But, and I refused to ride them now because of it, but I, I still got to go out and do stuff. I got to rollerblade. I got to, you know, play with the other kids. I was just sick more often. I spent more time indoors than the average child, which wasn't a huge deal to me. I mean, I didn't enjoy being sick, but the being trapped inside was not the end of the world because again, I just got to color more and I loved that. My mom would bring me hot tea filled with sugar. So I loved that, which was not the healthiest thing but I loved it. So it, again, it wasn't all negative. It's just why or how I ended up getting to where I was drawing or coloring all the time. And I was not some child prodigy by any means. When I was in kindergarten, I was obsessed with drawing rainbows. Like every single day at school, I would draw a rainbow and write, or have my teachers help me write, this is a picture of a rainbow. So much so that my mom actually had to go talk to the teachers because she thought that I was slow. She thought something was wrong with me because I wasn't doing a variation of things like she would expect me to. I think the conversation went something like this. The teacher said we let the kids do what they want and explore, you know, their own artistic side and my mom asked if she was going to pay for my unemployment when I was an adult and couldn't get a job because all I could do was draw rainbows. This is actually a sample of one I did. I think I was in third grade. I'm assuming that's why there's a three in this picture, but this was one, a watercolor that I did of the rainbow that I did every day for years. Turns out I'm just obsessive and when I like something, I paint it or draw or whatever it is over and over and over again, which is why today you see the same themes in my painting so often. So I drew rainbows a lot. And again, I was sick a lot, so I drew more. And as the years went on, I continued to draw and I did start to progress. I did get to where my drawing skills were above average for my age. I was about eight or nine years old when I decided I was now obsessed with horses. I drew horses nonstop for years. I still remember my best friend as a kid telling me I wouldn't want to ride a horse that looked like that. I mean, I was not a prodigy. I wasn't amazing. I, I was better than average. I was not some gifted child by any means. So moving on to when I was a teenager, I was still sick a lot. We still didn't know I had celiac disease, so I continued to be sick all the time. And when I was 16, in my infinite teenager wisdom, I decided that my mom's rules were too harsh and it, my dad would be not, my biological dad would be a better place to live, which was really stupid because I knew very well that my biological dad is schizophrenic. He's an alcoholic and he's abusive, but he wanted me to live with him. And so he kept promising me the world, all the stuff he was going to give me, all the stuff he was going to do for me. So I moved in with him worst six months of my life. The mental abuse was much more common with him than the physical abuse, but both sucked. So I ended up becoming really, really depressed all the time. So now I was sick and living in an abusive situation. So I would just shut myself off in my room and draw and paint a lot. At this point in time, my favorite thing to paint were orcas. And I would do a watercolor base and then charcoal for the whales themselves. And I don't have a sample of that now, but my mom does have one of those early drawings or paintings at her house. And I will be visiting her and my dad, my good dad, my stepdad next week. I'll take you on a tour of some of my older work and show you what that looked like then. But anyway, I was sick a lot. I didn't feel well. And then I was dealing with the abuse from my dad my biological dad. Not a good situation. And the depression got so severe that all I wanted to do, I just completely shut off from the rest of the world and all I wanted to do was sit alone and draw or sleep. Either way, I was good with either one. But this is when I started to really progress. My drawing skills definitely started to improve. After six months of the crap with my biological dad, I moved back in with my mom, so depression went away, but I'd already developed a habit of drawing. I mean, I was already drawing before this, but now I had a, a more specific style that I did all the time. All I wanted to do as well. And in my early years as a professional artist, I, defi I specialized in marine life. That's pretty much all I painted. So back again to the health stuff, when I was 17, 
2019, I was exposed, I drank out of a girl's cup who had recently had mono, and of course, because my immune system being what it was, I ended up with mono, scarlet fever, and strep throat at the same time. I was so sick and it took me so, so long to, to get better, but I never felt all the way better. And I think this was the trigger or the point that started my fibromyalgia or really kicked that into action. So at this time, my senior year in high school, most kids were figuring out what they wanted to do with their life. And my goal in life, all I wanted to do was sleep. I wanted a job or something that would let me sleep in every day. I seemed to have this idea that if I slept more, I would feel better. I was just so tired all the time. And the more tired I was, the more nauseated I was, and the more my wrist hurt from the arthritis and all of that. So I just wanted to sleep. So I didn't make the college plans that my friends were making. Again, all I could think of is I just want to sleep. After high school, I had a job working at a pet store and then eventually in animal hospitals. And I just didn't have the energy to both work and go to school. It wasn't worth it to me. I was just too exhausted, too tired, felt terrible, didn't want to do any of that. When I was 19, a friend and I were walking down around Laguna Beach. I'm from Southern California, forgot to mention that part. We were walking down at Laguna Beach and we came across this outdoor kind of gondola type thing that this lady was selling her paintings in and she was doing dolphins and whales, pretty much what I was doing, only she was, her perspective was off, her de it was just a mess. It was terrible and she was selling them anywhere from 2000 to around 10,000 and my I can do that better than that person attitude kicked in and that was the point where I decided and it's a terrible reason but that was the point that I decided I want to be a fine artist for a living so at this point when I was 19 uh, that's when I started painting even more than I was before I was still sick a lot still didn't feel well so spending more time in my bedroom was fine with me and I was also working towards what I wanted to do for a living. I started showing my work in small local galleries and coffee shops and that sort of thing in any art show that I could enter. My work wasn't amazing by any means, but people seemed to like it. Shortly after that, the animal hospital that I was working at was a part of a bigger building. The back part of the building was where they were bagging dog food. And Jaime Jimenez worked there. Jaime Jimenez is what my biggest art hero this guy is phenomenal he can do any style any medium he's amazing his resume is something that any artist would drool over at the time he was going to the art center in pasadena we spent a lot of our lunch breaks talking about art we'd go to different local art galleries and look at what they had there Jaime was great because he was the level of art he was doing i was nowhere i will never be anywhere near what Jaime can do but he could have looked down on me and judged me negatively for the work that I was producing at the time, but he didn't. He was so encouraging. He would pick out the things that he liked about my work. He never offered unsolicited advice, which was nice because he definitely was in a place, skill level, that he could have ripped my stuff apart. In fact, he still could. And up to this point, I had this attitude that this is just my style. This is how I paint. Instead of thinking I need to improve, it was this is how I paint. And a lot of new young artists get into that mindset and it's a really dangerous place to be, especially if you stay there, because it, it limits you. Meeting Jaime, seeing what he could do, talking to him, all of a sudden I wanted more. I wanted to do better. I wanted to be like Jaime. One day while we were looking at a gallery of other artwork, there was an artist who had done some phenomenal, I don't even remember who the artist was, but I loved his work and I was pointing out the things that I liked about it to Jaime and he let me know that that guy was using a wet into wet technique and at this point in time, I was primarily working in acrylic paint. So he let me know how he was doing that and he said he would bring in the supplies and do a little demonstration for me on our lunch break the following week. He brought in a little single action hobby airbrush that he was just using to spray water hooked up to a can of air and he showed me how you use a mop brush, just a quick little 10 minute demonstration. I still have the sample somewhere, I should find that. But he just did this quick little demonstration to show me how to blend wet into wet. This little 10 minute demonstration completely changed my work. I call this my pre Jaime and post Jaime period. You wouldn't even guess that it was the same artist. I mean, literally, I went from, and I'll, I'll find samples and leak them up here, but what I was doing before and then the first painting I did after him just showing me that one demonstration, the difference was amazing. Within the next several years, my fibromyalgia just continued to get worse and I got to where I wasn't painting as often. I was just so tired. I felt terrible. I didn't want to do anything. It wasn't until 2007, I think, that I was finally diagnosed with fibromyalgia and then I later found out what type of arthritis I had that was causing the problems with my back and my wrist. But the point is, I really wasn't working much. 
In 2005, I got my first Italian Greyhound, and this is when I started doing pet portraits. I had joined some different dog forums, or Italian Greyhound forums specifically. People saw my work, and they wanted to, me to paint their dogs. And this is really where that started. And it was a good way to make some extra money. I had been teaching at Michael's. I was teaching my own art classes out of Michael's. And now I was able to be commissioned for dog portraits. But I kept getting more and more sick. So while I really wanted to do surreal work, I didn't have the energy, so if it wasn't something I was specifically being paid for, I wasn't going to do it. In 2007, we moved to North Texas. My fibromyalgia just was getting worse and worse and worse all the time. I finally, after a, f a few more years went by where I was not getting very much done in the way of art at all. I mean, even being sick in the past when I was sick, I would use that as a time to paint. Now with the fibromyalgia adding into everything, I was, in too much pain and too nauseated. I didn't even want to get out of bed most days. I finally got so desperate and so sick of my life being what it was that I went online, did a few searches. My actual search terms were how I cured my fibromyalgia because there had to be something. Like somebody had to have, find, have found a way to feel better. None of the prescription medications really work. They just cause more problems. So I wasn't going near those. I came across a lot of websites where people were saying that they went on a raw vegan diet and that's what made them feel better. And at this point I was desperate. I was ready to try anything. I stuck to raw vegan for three months. That diet is really difficult to stick to because not, it's not just vegan. It's nothing's cooked all raw vegetables. Every single one of my fibromyalgia symptoms went away. My arthritis was gone, no pain, no nausea. I was still tired all the time, that didn't get better, but the pain and the nausea, which were my main two complaints, those were gone, like completely gone. So as time went on and I got to the point where I was like, I can never eat another salad again, I did start eating meat again and I did start eating other things. But through this, the main thing that I learned was if I control certain things in my diet, carbs and sugar, both artificial and artificial is much, much worse, but artificial and real sugar will trigger the fibromyalgia and the arthritis. If I can avoid those, I feel so much better. So now I got to the point where I could paint a lot and I started painting a lot. In 2011, back to Jaime Jimenez, because I swear this guy could suggest anything and I'll do it because I think he's a genius. But he said, hey, why don't you go, why don't you record what you're painting and put it on YouTube? For the next two years, I started painting more and more than I had pretty much my whole life. And I was recording most everything and throwing them up on YouTube. Anyway, I started painting or having at least one painting video done a week, even if it was just gonna be a little filler video while I was working on a bigger project. Doing that, it got me in the habit of constantly painting and it triggered this obsession with, all I wanna do is paint. Like if I'm doing anything else, if I'm out shopping or if I'm out with friends, I feel guilty, like I'm supposed to be at home painting right now, which is a good thing because I am producing so much more than I ever had before. And the more you paint, the more you produce, the better you get. So it's just all around been a really good thing for me. Now I still deal with the fibromyalgia and usually it's because I get stupid and decide I need to eat Doritos or something that's gonna trigger and make me not feel well. But when I do, I just go back to eating healthy, go back to raw vegan for a few days and I will feel fine. And this is why I'm not bitter or upset about the health problems that I have because when I was young, Younger, if I felt well, my life would have just taken a completely different path. Chances are I would have gone to college and I would have picked a career that was going to pay me a regular paycheck. Something a lot safer, something a lot easier than, than the path that I've chosen. The thing is, I am so happy. I love my life. Yeah, I don't always have a regular paycheck. I don't know how much I'm going to make from month to month, but I love painting. And the other thing that's so nice for me, because I don't feel well all the time, if I'm having a bad day, the fibromyalgia kicks in and I'm just not feeling well, I can sleep longer, no big deal. If I don't paint that day, it is not the end of the world. I don't have to call in sick, I just stay in bed longer. So that is a really long life story of how I ended up becoming an artist and why I do what I do. I do video critiques every Tuesday where I am critiquing your original paintings or drawings. I have my own speed paintings and drawings every Wednesday and now once a week, my art vlogs. So make sure you subscribe and follow me on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, Tumblr and all those social media sites, links below in the video description to keep up with news and my newest work. I'll see you guys in a couple of days.